So we already spoke about electromagnetic induction, which states that only a change in magnetic field will induce a current in a wire, will induce a voltage in that wire. And we said that if we want to find the magnitude or amount of our voltage induced by a change in magnetic field, we have to use Faraday's law. So Faraday's law states that our amount or magnitude of induced voltage is equal to the change in our magnetic flux divided by the change in time or the time it takes for that change in magnetic flux to take place. And if we want to find the magnitude of our current induced, we simply use Ohm's law. We find our voltage and divide it by our resistance and we find our induced current. Now, Faraday's law doesn't tell us the direction of our induced current. What will tell us is Lenz's law. Lenz's law helps us find our direction of our induced current, while Faraday's law and Ohm's law together helps us find our magnitude of current induced. Now, Lenz's law states the following. It states that our induced current in our wire will travel in the direction so that the magnetic field produced by our induced current opposes the original change in flux or change in magnetic flux. Now before we use and apply this law and before I show you how to probably use this law let's make sure we get the following point. Now we're talking about two magnetic fields. The first magnetic field is the changing magnetic field that induces our current. The second magnetic field that we're talking about here is the magnetic field produced by our induced current. In other words, any traveling current in a wire, be it induced or not induced, will create a magnetic field. And so when a change in magnetic field creates this induced current, that induced current in itself will also produce a magnetic field. So, once again, Lenz's law can be used to find our direction of the induced current in our wire due to some change in magnetic field. Now, in order to use Lenz's law, you must follow the following three steps. If you follow these three steps, you're almost guaranteed to get your problem correct if the problem involves Lenz's law. Now, the first step is the following. Determine if the magnetic flux inside our loop is increasing, decreasing, or remains the same. Number two, the magnetic field due to our induced current, A, points in the same direction as original magnetic field if our magnetic flux is decreasing. B, points in the opposite direction of the original magnetic field if our magnetic flux is increasing and our magnetic field due to our induced current is zero if our magnetic flux is constant. And once you choose which one it is, A, B, or C, then you must use your right hand rule number one to find direction of induced current. So let's, <coughs> so let's look at the following three examples and let's use these three steps to find our direction of the induced current. So let's look at problem number one. So first we must determine if the magnetic flux inside our loop, in this square loop, is increasing, decreasing, or remains the same. Now recall what our magnetic flux is. Magnetic flux is equal to magnetic field times area of loop times cosine a, um, theta. And this angle is simply the angle between the face vector of our area and our actual magnetic field lines. So, let's begin. Is the magnetic flux increasing, decreasing, or remains the same as we pull our loop this way? Well, notice our angle stays the same, our area stays the same, area doesn't change, but our field, what happens to our magnetic field as I pull this guy away? Well, as I pull it away, the amount of field lines decreasing decreases, and that means our B decreases. So our flux decreases, and that means it decreases. So if we jump to number two, the magnetic field due to our induced current <coughs> is A, because A states 
it points in the same direction as original because our flux is decreasing. So, because in part one we answer decreasing, we jump to part two and we choose A because A deals with a decreasing field. So that means our magnetic field produced by our induced current points in the same direction as original. So, I use my right hand rule number one and I simply say, okay, well, since my original field is pointing outward, that means my induced magnetic field also should be pointing in the same direction. So it should also point outward. So, so I take my hand and I grip my current or I grip my wire. And that means if I pick my thumb up, this will be the direction that my current or induced current is traveling. So I grab it this way and it will travel this way. So my current or <coughs> my induced current will be going this direction. So it will travel counterclockwise. So let's go to step number two. Exact same procedure. What happens to our magnetic flux? as we go from this larger circle, larger loop, and we shrink it down to the smaller loop. Well, now the area decreases and the B decreases. So that means our magnetic flux also decreases. But note now, our actual, our original magnetic field, our original change of magnetic field points into our page, not out of the page. So, once again, I choose decreasing, so I choose A, and that means our induced magnetic field or our magnetic field of our induced current points in the same direction, so it should point inward. So now I'm not gripping this way, but I'm actually gripping this way because I want my field to go inside in the same direction as this field. So I grip it this way, I extend my thumb, and that means my direction moves this way or clockwise. So let's go to example number three. In example number three, we have a loop whose area stays the same. We're not actually moving the loop, but we're moving our magnet. So this magnet has a north pole, south pole, so our field lines should be going this way, from our north pole to our south pole and through our magnet. Now, <clears throat> now notice that the angle between our face and our magnetic field lines are 90 or is 90 degrees and that means because cosine 90 is zero our magnetic flux is zero it's constant it's not changing so if I move my guy my magnet back and forth as long as my loop stays in this position nothing will happen this will be constant and that means since it remains the same we jump to two and part C so the magnetic field due to our induced current is zero. And that means that we don't even have to use part three and we could say that our current is also zero. There is no induced current in this loop. So once again, it's very important for you to understand that we're talking about two magnetic fields, not one. The first magnetic field is our magnetic field produced or the, our original change of magnetic field that produces our current, our voltage. Now the second magnetic field is the magnetic field produced by our induced current. And that's the magnetic field we're talking about when we say magnetic field due to our induced current.